books this side. Just have out a pencil and your speed drill booklet. Go ahead and have your speed drill booklet out. Then you return to that first page. And we're going to do speed drill number two. So books this side. Turn your text, your speed drill booklet to speed drill two. I see there you have a minute and a half for five subtraction problems. Be careful in your borrowing. Minute and a half. Ready? Begin. Put your pencil away and get your pen out. Look, let's see this you're done in under a minute. So good job, good, good you. Hopefully that means we have right answers as well. So go ahead and put your pencil aside, have a pen out. Once again, let you check your own. I will go back and double check these, but for now, mark your own. Just put a slash through a problem if you got an incorrect answer. Put a slash through a problem if you had an incorrect answer. Here are your answers. I'll read each one of them twice. 4,627. 4,627, 5,075, 5,075, 197, 197, 211,992, 211,992, and the last one is 45,397. 45,397. All right, if you missed none, of course, you'll have a 100. Minus 1 is an 85. Minus 2 is a 70. Minus 3, 55. Minus 4 is a 40. And minus all five would be a 0. Hopefully that was not the case. Turn back a page to the score page that we talked about last time. And in the space for Speed Drill 2, write your score from today. Once you're in, go and close up your Speed Drill booklet, and I'll come collect that from you. And any hundreds today? Look at Lana. Scott just missed one, I hope. All right, so 85. Not bad at all. All right, we'll continue working on those off and on throughout the school year. Uh, if you would, go ahead and uh, open up your books to page 22. I want to review what we started talking about yesterday. One of the things we talked about yesterday was uh, the greatest common factor. And I emphasize, too, you see if you can remember the phrase, a factor is a part of a number. A factor is a part of a number. So a factor will always be smaller or as big, right? The biggest it could be is as big, but generally smaller. So we're looking for something smaller than the other numbers. And we said if we're not sure of the greatest common factor, there's something so like we could just look at the two numbers, but duh, it's whatever. But sometimes it's not that easy. What would be our procedure we should follow, Scott? Prime factor, everything, and then what do we do with those prime factors? See those prime factors that are in common. Good. Look for all the factors that are common to everything. If there's two numbers, three numbers, four numbers, whatever. Make sure we look for all the common factors and multiply all the common factors together. You're going to do that here on page 22 at the top of the page. Numbers 2 through 10, excuse me, in the homework section, numbers 2 through 10, the even. Page 22, numbers 2 through 10, the even. Just a few minutes to work on those. 
2, and 4, you're finding the greatest common factor. And then for number 6, 8, and 10, what would you use to reduce those fractions? What is the greatest common factor you would use if you were reducing? You don't actually have to reduce. Let's go ahead and see how we did on these. Uh, number two was the first one we should have done. What is the greatest common factor for those numbers? One? Five. five is the only factor they have in common. You got five and three. You got five, two, and five. They share a single five. How about for number four, Scott? 42, 70, and 112. 14. 14, and that's not one I could have looked at and spotted. I would have had to do the prime factoring there. Uh, we get a two, three, and seven. We get a 2, 5, and 7, and uh, whatever 112 is, there was a 2 and a 7 in there as well, so there's your 14 for your greatest common factor. For number 6, Lana, what's the greatest common factor that I would use to reduce the fraction? Um, 12, I see a 12 right away. Unfortunately, that's not actually the greatest common factor. Did you factor or did you just eyeball it? Well, I mean, Okay, well let's go and take a look at it. We've got 12, 24 over 72. So let's start by factoring the 24. How could I split up the 24? 2 and 12. 2 and 12, okay, and then 12. And then the 6. And then the 6. Oh, three. 2 and 3. Okay, let's take the 72 now and factor that up. Um, 
okay? And uh, by the way, I already see the 12 here, right? So if we wanted to, we just go, hey, I know all that's gonna be common. And then the six? I notice this two could still go with that two there, couldn't it? So actually two and 12 giving us 24. So if we wanted to reduce the fraction to lowest terms, we'd actually have to divide top and bottom by a 24. Ends up equaling a third, but that wasn't the problem. The question was what number? 24 would be our number. What about number eight, Scott? Two. Two. That's it, just two. Uh, and the number 10, Lana, didn't get that far, did you? I guess. You guess? What was your I guess? guess? Seven. Seven, and that's a pretty good guess. Um, they're both in the seven times tables. And again, if you were to factor, you've got a seven times two with 63. You've got seven times nine, which is three and three. Well, they share the seven, but nothing else. So seven is your greatest common factor. Are there any questions on the greatest common factor? Yes, ma'am. The number four, what, I don't know what numbers are. Like, I only factored out four because it's only four, but. Oh, for the 112? Yeah. yeah. So for 42, I'm assuming you said 6 and 7 and then went 2 and 3, right? So there's your factors. And then for 70, you said 7 and 10, mm -hmm. which gave you a 2 and a 5. So that's pretty straightforward there. Then we come to the 112, and I'm like, I don't even know where to start. Mm -hmm. Maybe I think of a 4, because I see the last two digits are divisible by 4. Um, so maybe I say, well, 4 and, help me, Lana, 4 goes into 11. Uh, with how many left? Um, uh, three. Three left over, and then four goes into 32. Eight, eight times, let me come over here, make sure it's on the screen. Uh, so we end up getting a four and a 28. Let's factor the four. Three, three. And let's factor the 28. Three, and then let's factor the four again. Three. Two and two. So yeah, just find something. If you could have started with two, because I know it's even, I have to go with four. So there we see, well, everybody's got at least one two. Now, this one had four twos, but the others only had one, so that doesn't really help. Uh, this has a three, nobody else has a three. This has a five, nobody else has a five. This has a seven, and a seven, and a seven, and there's our 14. Does that make sense? Okay. So yeah, with the, with the big numbers like this, just find something. I mean, even if you'd started with, I know it's even, so there's a two. Let's see, two goes into 11. Um, five. Five times with. And two goes into 12. Okay, all of a sudden now you see seven and eight and two and four and stuff like that, right? So just find something to do, and then it'll usually pretty quickly give you something else to work with. Good question. Good. Anything else? Any other questions on this? All right, then let's take a look at the extra credit I assigned you uh, last night. And uh, again, you get an extra credit point for either of these that are done. Um, Either of you do 33 and 34 to work on. Use a note, you did. All right, let's see. Okay, well, let's just talk through these then since you're the only one who did. And um, Scott, would read problem 33 while I erase. Michael Moses is on a earth there, they end up laundry every eight weeks. If he did both today, how soon before he does both on the same day again? All right, what did you put? 48 days. Uh, that is not correct. Let's think about it this way. So. Every Saturday, he mows his lawn. How long does it take to get to the next Saturday? A week, a week which is seven days. seven days. All right, so here's a Saturday, and it also happens to be laundry day. All right, seven days later, he comes to another Saturday. Eight days later to a laundry day. Well, obviously, these don't coincide. Seven days later, he's up to 14. Eight days later, it's up to 16. Obviously, they don't coincide. Seven more days, 21. Eight more days, 24. They're getting further from coinciding, right? And um, another uh, seven days, we're at 28. Another eight days, 32. Well, you could keep going with this, couldn't you? But the point is you need a seven. If you think of it this way, these are sevens. Does that make sense, Lana? These are sevens because they have seven in them. These are eights. You need a seven and an eight to meet up. Where would seven and eight meet up? 56. Now it would be, there would be an eight times of doing mowing and seven times of doing laundry, but the seven and the eight would end up meeting up after 56 more days. They'll have to do both on the same day. All right, so no point there. Let's see about 34. Go ahead and read that one for us. Four times plant flowers. A source of collapse contains six plant seeds. 
and bundles of plot sheets containing four. A. Order the smallest number of tenants to comprise or have an equal number of tenants in pods. B. How many flats and bundles could be purchased? All right, so if the flats have six plants in them, and if you can buy little flat little stacks of pots to put the plants in, um, what's the smallest number you could buy? Twelve. Twelve total, which we need how many flats? Three. And how many pots? Or bundles of pots? Three. Three. All right, so you do get one extra credit point. Let me jot that down here. Good job on that. So Scott with one. Lana, does that make sense? Um, you, ever, you ever been to the, the nursery section of the hardware store and seen the little plants? And they come in little plasticky containers that have little segmented pieces. And there's a little flowery thing in each one of them. Okay, and then there's this little stack of, well, that's a horrible flower pot, flower pots, but then there's another one and another one and another one. And they've all got those things plastic wrap around to hold them together. So these come four at a time and these come six at a time. Well, obviously you got more plants than you do pots. So we gotta buy more. So we buy another one, we're up to 12. We buy another one, we're only up to eight. Ah, oh, but if we bought one more, we'd be up to 12 and now they can match. Does that make sense? And what we're essentially dealing with are what we call multiples, aren't we? Multiples of four, four, eight, 12. What would be the next multiple of four class? 16. 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, and so forth, right? Multiples of 6, 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, and so forth, right? Even here, multiples of 7, 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, 49, 56, and so forth. Right down here, multiples of 8. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56, 64, and so on and so forth. Right? Those are multiples of numbers. And what we want to talk about here is the least common multiple. But I want you to write this statement down. A multiple is bigger than a number. These multiples of 8 are all bigger than 8, except for 8 itself. A multiple of 7 is something bigger than 7, or maybe 7 itself. Multiples of 6, multiples of 4. A multiple is bigger than a number. A multiple is bigger than a number. So when we look for the least common multiple, we're expecting something big. And that's essentially what you were asked to find last night. I was wondering if you could kind of figure it out on your own. You almost figured them both out. did get one. Is what's the least common multiple that we're dealing with? Um, let's consider these numbers, 6 and 8. Well, one way to do a least common multiple is to go and list out some multiples. For instance, 6, the next multiple class would be 12. 18, 24, 36. 30, then 36. That's okay. And then for 8? And so on and so forth. Now, where do they match up? 24. So we would say the least common multiple of 6 and 8 is 24. That's one way to do it. Fortunately, we didn't have to go very far to get to 24. But that's not always the case, is it? There are sometimes you'd be writing a whole lot. For instance, <coughs> 3, 4, and 5. Well... 3, 6, 9, 12, not 18, 15, 18, and so forth. 4, right? 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, okay, and then 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Well, they haven't matched up yet, and I just wrote a whole bunch of numbers for nothing. So there's a better way to find the least common multiple than necessarily making lists of all of the multiples. The better way, write these down, this down in your notes or maybe off to the side here, is start by number one, prime factoring the given values. Prime factor the given numbers. For six, it factors into two and three. For eight, it factors into two and four, and therefore a couple more twos. One tip, especially for this on the factoring tree, 
If you have something that doesn't split up and something that does, split up the thing that splits and just bring straight down the thing that doesn't so that they're all in a line together. Does that make sense? All the factors are in a single line. Second step is to determine the winner. See who has the most twos. How many is the most twos of either one, class? Uh, eight. The eight has how many, Lana? Eight. Three. So the eight is the winner of the twos. He has three of them, or we would say two cubed. He is a loser. Who has the most threes? The six, how many? One. Just one. And we're going to multiply step three, all the winners together. So step one, find factor. Step two, identify the winners. Step three, multiply all the winners together. You might be jotting that down. Multiply all the winners together. So that when I do two cubed, two times two times two is eight times three is 24. And we can find our least common multiple that way. Well, what about the 3, 4, and 5? Well, how would I prime factor a 3, class? Uh, just 2. It's just 3. Uh, how do I prime factor a 5? Yeah. It's just 5. What about a 4? Yeah. Well, that's 2 times 2, right? Well, there's the winner of the 2s. There's the winner of the 3s. There's the winner of the 5s. Everyone's a winner, right? Because these numbers are prime to each other or relatively prime. So guess what the least common multiple is? 3 times 2 times 2 times 5, which would be 60. Oh. Scott saw the question coming. 60 would be my least common multiple of 3, 4, and 5. Write down these two numbers on a piece of paper, or perhaps if you have some blank space off to the side of a page or something in your book, 36 and 40. 36 and 40. And Lana, help me prime factor the 36. Uh, 66. All right. There we go. And since everything continued factoring, we didn't have to bring anything down. How about the 40, Scott? 8 and 5. 8 and 5. All right. How about the 8? 4 and 2. But the 5 I'm just going to bring down. Okay, how about the 4? 2 and 2. I'm going to bring down the 2. I'm going to bring down the 5. Okay, so here are my list of factors. Lana, who wins the twos? 40. The 40, how many is that? Three. three. So two cubed is my winner, that's a loser. How about the winner of the threes, Scott? 36. The 36 has two of them, three squared. Well, the loser didn't even show up, it was, it was, a, it was a forfeit. Okay, and then Lana, obviously the winner of the fives. Uh, 40, and there's only one of them. So we write all the winners down, and then we work it out. 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 is beginning to sound like a rapid calculation. Times 5, what is that? 8. What did you say? 360. Yes, I thought I heard 36. I'm like, this is 36. 360 is the least common multiple. Questions about how to find that. Does that make sense? We should remember this from years gone by because this is not a new concept for us. Um, questions. Do page 20 and 21, 18 through 26, the even now. Pages 20 to 21, I want to show you numbers 18 to 26. The even. 18 to 26, the even. Factoring is the theme, but this time winners are what we're after. Okay, so 
Yes, I'm sorry. I, should, I wish I'd had. A, I need to make sure I have an example problem that has this in there. Yeah, Lana brings up a question on number 18. You've got the uh, 12, which you factored into 2 and 6, which bring down the 2, the 2 and 3, right? And then 30, which you factored into 5 and 6, which bring down the 5, and that's 2 and 3. So Lana said these twos are winners. That 2 is a loser. But there's a tie with the 3s. Okay, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Okay, this is how it works. Um, neither one of you basketball fans, are you? Not so much. You are. Okay, okay. So you'll, you'll resonate with this a lot. You'll just have to kind of imagine it. Guy goes up for a layup, and he crashes into the defender. Okay, there's one of two fouls that can be called. Either the defender got in the way, and he wasn't supposed to, and so it's called a block, or the offensive player caused the contact, in which case he's the bad guy, and we got a charge. Okay? The referee is in a bad spot because he has to call something. And he doesn't know what it was any more than anyone else knows what it was because he doesn't have instant replay. Okay? So most of them are faking it. They can't tell what happened most of the time. But they got to go in there and just sell the call. Like, oh man, that was a charge. Going this way. Yeah. <laughs> or, nope, got a block. Number, number 23. Uh, <laughs> they act like they know what they're doing, but they're just making it up as they go, right? This is true, too, in case of, like, races when you were in elementary school. And it's like, it's a tie. But you can't say tie because nobody's happy with a tie. People hate ties. But you're just like, Lana wins. Sorry, Scott. Better luck next time. You know? <laughs> just make it up as they go. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to be that referee. We got a tie. We don't know who's the winner. We're just going to make one up. Which one do you like better, Lana? This three or that three? Just one. No, pick one. Which, which three do you like better? Winner, loser, just like that. So if there's a tie, just pick one to be the winner, pick the other to be the loser, and just act like you have confidence, you know what you're doing, nobody will sweat it. Until the instant replay comes out and shows you picked the wrong three. Just kidding, you can't pick the wrong three. This is obviously the winner of the fights. But anytime there's a tie, just pick one. Okay? Uh, kind of like uh, earlier today, in fact, we were doing a practice exercise, and two students put their pencils down at the same moment and turned and looked at me. She was first. <laughs> Could I tell? Not really. She was first. All right? There's a tie. No, there's not. That's the winner. <laughs> it's like they say in, in softball. People talk, we talked about this in PE, right? You remember from last year. Runner reaches first base at the same moment the ball gets there. That's a tie, right? Nope, no such thing as a tie. Ball got there first. Or runner got there first. We just have to make a call and act like we can tell. We can't tell. We're just faking it, okay? Well, fake it. That one, that's the three right there. That's the winner. That's the loser. Okay? And just fake it in case of a tie. Long answer to an easy question. So, Lana, what is the answer to number 18? It's 60. It is 60. Yes.
If you finish early, go back and do the odd problems that we skipped over the 18 or 19 through 25 odd. Everyone's a winner. Winning's not much fun. Winning's only fun when you can beat someone and somebody else has to be a loser and you can establish dominance and superiority. <laughs> That's when winning is fun. <laughs> it's not so much about me winning as everyone else losing. <laughs> Just one more minute to work on this evens. Again, if you finished early, knock out the odds. Of course, if you're watching on video, you have the opportunity to pause the video and give yourself time to finish them all if you wanted to, but depending how studious, aka nerdy, you are. Your computer's shutting down. here together and we already got our answer for number 18 from Milan it's 60 number 19 should be 63 number 20 is 154 number 21 if you got that far 210 number 22 is 390 number 23 if you got that far 252 number 24 is 160 number 25 is 81 and number 26 48 of the ones you did, even if you didn't finish all of those, how did you do on the ones you did? Did you get all of the ones you did correct? You missed one. You missed missed a couple of them. Okay. Which one? What ones? Number twenty-four. I got one hundred twenty. One hundred what? One hundred twenty. That's what I said. One hundred twenty for number twenty-four. You said one sixty. I said one sixty. Never mind. I lied. Number twenty-four is one hundred twenty. 120. I got 26. 48. Oh, I got 96. 96. Okay, let's take a look at your factoring real quick, Lana. You factored 8 into 2 times 2 times 2. Mm -hmm. You factored 12 into 2 times 2 times 3. Mm -hmm. And 16 into 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Oh, oh I forgot to mark that. Sorry. Ah, okay. So, Lana, your winner of the twos is these four, because these two are losers and those three are losers. And the winner of the threes, of course, is three. The nice thing is, since it's all of them, you already know that's a 16. So you just have to multiply 16 
times the three, and there's the 48. So you only missed the one? Okay, and then Sky, you didn't miss any, I just misspoke, you got them all correct, okay? Any other questions on least common multiple? Now, this is a very important concept because in order to work with fractions starting tomorrow, we have to be able to work with least common multiples. You're familiar with this already, right? To add fractions, to subtract fractions, to compare fractions, they have to have a common denominator. They have to have a common denominator. It's okay, we're shaking the rust off the summer still. Have to have a common denominator. Well, what is a common denominator? It's a common multiple. So when you're told over the next week or so at various times, you've got to find the least common denominator or the LCD, what you're really finding is an LCM of those denominators. Look at uh, problem number 29. Look at number 29. They give us two fractions here. They give us 3 tenths and they give us 8 forty fifths. They want us to determine the LCM of the denominators. In other words, the least common denominator. Looking at number 29 there on page 21. They give us a couple of fractions. Well, to determine the common denominator, let's factor the denominators. Lana, how could I factor the 10? 2 and 5. 2 and 5. And the 45? Uh, 5 and 9. 5 and 9, which of course the 9 could factor further into 3 and 3. Three and three we could bring down the 5. Well, there's the winner of the 2s. There's the winner of the 3s. What do I do in case of a tie class? Uh, Pick one. Doesn't matter which one. Ah, this one. All right, and then you multiply. Two times five times three times three. Ninety. Ninety. So ninety is my least common multiple. Therefore, ninety is also the least common denominator that I would use in case of adding the fractions, multiplying the fractions, comparing the fractions, whatever. All of that based on that least common denominator. Look at number thirty-two. Look at number 32. I've got uh, 1 half, 1 tenth, and 1 fifteenth. Well, again, in order to compare, add, subtract, you have to have a common denominator, but a common denominator is a common multiple. multiple. And specifically, because we are lazy. lazy, good. We want to do as little work as possible. We want the least common multiple or least common denominator. Well, 2 is already prime. What about... Uh, Actually, I don't, won't circle it yet because I don't know if it's a winner. We'll factor the 15, Scott. Three and five. And we'll factor the 10. Two and five. Two and five. All right. And uh, the winner of the twos, there's a tie. What do I do? Pick one. It don't matter. Okay, I already circled him, so I'll circle him again. He's a loser. All right, and then uh, we have a three. Well, winner by default. Everyone else forfeited. And uh, there's a tie for the fives. What do we do? Pick one. Winner, loser. Okay, however you want to go, it doesn't matter which one you pick for the winner, and we multiply. Two times five times 10, class. Um, 30. Yeah, I mean, two times five times three. Um, 30. It is 30. Yeah, two times five, that's 10. Two times five times 10, no, times three. 30 is my least common denominator because it is my least common multiple of those denominators. Does it make sense what we're doing here with the fractions? So I want you to do the ones we skipped 27, 28, 30, 31. Just looking at the denominators, and you're going to find the LCM, the least common multiple, of the denominators.
see how we did on these four. Number 27, what's the least common multiple or the least common denominator? Scott? 12. 12. What about on number 28? What's the LCM? Lana? 27. 27. Good. Number 30? 21. 21. That was pretty straightforward there. And then what about number 31? This was a little harder. Lana? 72. 72. Excellent. Turn the page. Turn the page. Let's do a little bit of review here. And on page 22 in the homework section, notice that 11 through 14 have blue numbers. Also notice that 25 through 32 have blue numbers. I want you to answer the blue questions. 11 to 14, 25 to 32. They're on page 22. Answer the blue questions. You have a minute to answer as many of these as you can. Look at these together now. Uh, number 11, are those two numbers relatively prime? If not, what's their common factor? Lana? They're less than one. Yes, they are relatively prime. Good. What about uh, 26 and 39, Scott? No. No, what's their common factor? 13. 13. 
How would we write 2 to the negative second using positive exponents, Lana? Um, well, I don't want to write 2 to the negative second. Good, 1 over 2 to the second, or 1 over 2 squared. How would we rewrite that expression, 1 over 3 to the fourth, using negative exponents? 3 to the negative fourth power. Good, jumping down to number 25. What are you giving me multiply, Lana? 3.51. Good, 3.510, but we don't really need the zero. Number 26, when we subtract, Scott? 43.603. Good, 43.603. What did you get for the prime factorization of 500, Lana? Um, I skipped that one. Skip that one, Scott? 2 squared times 5 cubed. 2 squared times 5 cubed. That would start with 50 and 10, and prime factor from there. How would we write that, using, that next thing using exponents, Lana? Um, Three cubed times seven squared. Good, three cubed times seven squared. How would we write that uh, seven to the negative second using positive exponents, Scott? One over seven squared. One over seven squared. Um, what's the symbol for absolute value, Lana? The two lines. Yeah, the two vertical lines on either side of something that goes inside. Which of those numbers are composite numbers, Scott? Nine, fifteen, twenty-seven. Good, nine, fifteen, and twenty-seven. And number 32, pick any composite numbers that are prime to each other. Lana, did you have something? Uh, um, pick, any, pick any easy composite number. Hang on there. Eight, nine, uh, nine, okay, nine. Now pick an, another composite number that's not got anything in it related to nine. Um, well, 15 shares a 3 with 9, doesn't it? Well, she's thinking, what did you have, Scott? 9 and 16. Okay, 9 and 16 would be prime to each other. Okay, 9 and 22 would work. 9 and 10 would work. Good. Again, a lot of different answers you could add for that one. All right, no homework this evening. Have a wonderful rest of your day.